Mechagodzilla, and other SH monster arts are at Big Bad Toy Store, so check out the link in the description below. Hello there, collectors. It is Steven here once again with another SH Monster Arts review for you. And this time we are taking a look at the second kaiju to be released in the SH Monster Arts line from the Showa era. Second meaning not Godzilla. We have Mecha Godzilla. The original incarnation of the mechanical beast that everyone knows some love is the design given the respect it deserves in one of Bandai's premium kaiju figure lines. Well, I'm going to be honest with you, not quite. What do I mean? Well, let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. Immediately taking a look at Mechagodzilla, one thing that I think Bandai really did well here with this figure would be the sculpt. Proportions, it's been subjective for some. They think that the jaw may be a little too big or too small, the head being off. But the detailing in the sculpt is fantastic, phenomenal. You can see all of the individual bolts that would be around the ribcage, the chest, waist, legs, all of that fun stuff. And even some of the markings on the head are very nice. They're very, very, very small details, yet they are clearly present on the figure. Where I think it's pretty objective that they drop the ball, though, would be the paint. You see, instead of actually using something like a weathered paint like Mechagodzilla actually looked like on the screen to make it look like that he had been in a couple of battles or had traveled across the galaxy or whatever it may be, they went for the brightest silver they could find at the factory, and they went ahead and they slapped it on. Beyond that, any of the other paints that are used, such as the yellow dots on him or even the red on the arm for the MG, it just kind of looks uh, clumpy, to be honest with you. And even the silver paint in and of itself at some spots can seem a little clumpy. But that aside, that doesn't necessarily detract from the amazing sculpt that the figure has. So looking at the face up close right away, we can already begin to see some of the nice detailing with all of the little rivets and the bolts and whatever the mechanical terminology you'd like to use to hold Mechagodzilla together. And we even see there was a change from the prototype for the better here. Translucent plastic for the eyes. On the original one, they just used yellow paint to cover up the eyes. So it was a silver base with yellow paint. So that's really cool to see that there was a production change here for the final product. Now, here's where we begin to see that the paint starts to falter. If you see the red spot on the side of the head there, you can see that, yeah, questionable. Not really clean, not really the best. Admittedly, it's a smaller size, so... Oh, wait, smaller size? Yeah, you're going to see that in a little bit. So I guess some forgiveness can be had there, but as we continue to look on for Mechagodzilla, we can see that there's no weathering, no washing, nothing. Admittedly, the neck, which, again, the sculpt looks great for the vent that would be right there on the neck, it looks very bland. It really looks like there is no wash there, even though there is just a little bit of one. It's pretty sad, to be perfectly honest with you. As we continue to move down, though, we do have that yellow mark that's right underneath the neck, right at the sternum. It kind of looks like somebody forgot about that in the factory, just dipped their paintbrush in a little bit of yellow paint and quickly slapped it on. But what's cooler than that is as we open up the chest door, which you'll actually see how that's done later, on the inside we do see some mechanical parts. And that red dot that's right there, that looks better than the yellow dot that's right above it and below it. So what's the excuse here? I don't really know, but it's very, very, very inconsistent. As we look at the arms of Mechagodzilla, yeah, they don't really look perfect. And one of the reasons for that is you can actually pop those red MGs off if you wanted to, because those were just extra pieces that were inserted. I've disassembled the arms multiple times, I would know. So you can already see where their plans for Mechagodzilla 2 are coming into play. As we continue on for the rest of Mechagodzilla, you can definitely see continuation of the trend where the silver paint may clump up in some areas. There really isn't appropriate washing or weathering at all anywhere on this figure, but the sculpt is absolutely fantastic. I think they did a great job even down to the die cast feet, which really do add some nice weight to the figure to help a little bit with balancing. Now, something that you may have noticed, we do have metal rings around the knees of Mechagodzilla along with the shoulders. What's the deal with those? Well, they're just plastic rings used for the aesthetic design of Mechagodzilla. Did it work? Wait till the articulation section. Now we're going to take a look at Mechagodzilla's dorsal plates, and here's a good example of where the paint kind of pulled up and it doesn't necessarily look good. You see, the plates actually do have a little bit of texture to them, but as you look at them, you can kind of see swirls in the paint, almost where it didn't completely dry. Yeah, 
no good there, guys. No good there. And then we have the tail, which does actually look very nice. And as you'll see soon, it does have some nice articulation. And that fin at the tip, mm, yeah, very, very odd. Overall, Mechagodzilla sculpt is great, but the paint job really, really, really does hinder this figure. Yes, it does use some die cast parts in key areas, but to be perfectly honest with you, it doesn't really save it from anything. Alrighty, so Mechagodzilla's articulation, to be quite frank with you guys, it's not very good. One, in terms of engineering, two, in terms of function, and three, because three is better than two. What do we have? A lot of people say that the jaw doesn't really look natural, that something is off, and the reason for that, it's on a double access ball joint. So there's a ball joint that plugs into the mouth, into the head, and there is a ball joint that actually plugs into the bottom portion here of the jaw. So as you can clearly see, I can actually offset it like that and still have it kind of looking straight. Yeah, so that's not very good. He can do uh, some interesting things like the original SH Monster Arts Godzilla could do, which is not something a mechanical beast should do. But what you can do is you can actually center that correctly and you can have him close his mouth. And then once he closes his mouth, everything is just fine. You know, maybe some people should take that into consideration too. But anyway, we're going to be taking a look at the rest of the articulation now. And the head actually plugs into this portion of the neck on a ball joint. So we have a swivel, kind of. It rocks around too. That's what a ball joint does. Mine is very tight, so I'm worried about stress marks for that peg where the ball joint is at. Yeah, I'm kind of worried. But yeah, you can get Mechagodzilla to turn his head around completely for some iconic scenes. Now, you can get this Mechagodzilla into flying mode, and the way that that works is, honestly, they kind of suggest that you have to push the dorsal plates down and pull them up. I mean, all you really gotta kinda do is just do that. <laughs> and he can look up, which is a complete step above the original SH Monster Arts Godzilla released, uh, the Heisei one, where we all we had was a basic swivel, and you really couldn't move his head around at all. So that's very, very nice to see there. Now. That is all plugged into this portion of the neck, which is plugged into the body on a ball joint. So this way, you can really get Mechagodzilla to look everywhere, which is very nice. They did that well. What they didn't do well was the shoulders. Now, they do plug into the body on ball joints, and there is a cut in the sculpt there, so this way we can raise and lower his arms. So, I mean, we can pretty much get him to move his arms wherever we would like to at the point of the shoulders. But you know what really isn't great? We have four of these little rings on each side. Yeah, those four rings are actually the same shape as this covering piece, so this way, that joint actually looks like it's kind of covered up. <sighs> yeah, so people who complain about gaps for the likes of the 1995 mold birth version, you got what you wished for, and this is why it's a pain. Those are the same shape as that covering, so they can fit into the shoulder joint area, and they can get stuck behind the joint or get stuck in each other. See, these two perfectly good examples here that took me an hour to fix and make sure that they could actually be salvaged. And then here we are for this review, and I'm getting them stuck with ease. Now we... Uh, I just got another one stuck. Yeah, um, can I get it unstuck here on camera? So you saw a third one jump in there. You can see it. It's there. Is it going to happen? Yes. Okay, I saved it. So if that happens to you, basically all you have to do is just heat it up. The elbow plugs into this area here on a ball joint. This MG portion, that's actually just a sleeve. You can pop that off. And then you just got to pop the arm off and pull those out and put them back on. Not a huge deal. But it's a real, real pain, and I do foresee some people snapping some of these rings in the future. But anyway, elbow plugs into the bicep actually on a ball joint, so this way you can spin the elbow around a little bit. Very, very easy. This one, the hinge up here is stuck, but we do have elbow hinges, which is pretty cool. Double hinge. And then we do have ball jointed wrists, so that's neat. So yeah, we do have some serious quality control issues at the shoulder, that's why it's a pain. And then this thing, yeah, just it's a floating piece. You can move it forward, you can move it back, you can do whatever you want with it. We do have a ball-jointed waist, or an ab crunch, whatever you would prefer to call that. So Mechagodzilla can lean forward, back a little bit, rock from side to side, spin all the way around if you would need him to for some reason. And then that door on the chest is just a hinge that pulls down. 
There we go. The hips, there is a Y joint system going on in here. So there is one central point and then they break off and there are ball joints where the hips plug in. So there's that. Move about that far forward, that far back, about that far out to the side to do the splits. Then we do have double hinge knees, but they are blocked thanks to these other rings that are down here and this floating knee sculpt. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. The ankles are on ball joints, so this way you get a little bit of ankle rocker movement, but not too, too much. There you go. They are also made of die cast, the feet are, so yeah. That's fun. I did manage to pop, I think it was this foot off, and then pop back on with ease. Now we do have the tail, which is all ball jointed goodness right here from the base all the way down to the tip here. But this section is pretty much pointless because we have this little blade on the tail that is kind of popping off already. Good job, Bandai. Yeah. So can move it from left, move it from right, move it from up, move it from down. And the cool part about that is Mecha Godzilla needs to be a little bit more streamlined when he is flying. So there you go. He can fly without his flight stand. So if you're looking for an articulated Mecha Godzilla figure, congrats, you got an okay one because there are some flaws both in the design of the character itself and in the design choices from Bandai here. So Mecha Godzilla doesn't really make for a nice action figure. And then they made dumb ring choices. Come on, flick off. Flick. There we go. That, that was in the original part, and I, I just wanted to include it in the second take. And for accessories, we have not... Oh, wait a minute. You know what? We do have accessories here with Mechagodzilla. Look at that. Ah, oh, cool. All right, so what do we have? We have interchangeable hand parts to make it look like Mechagodzilla fired off his finger rockets. And are you ready? We have a beam effect. It's the chest beam. Yep. Instead of the iconic eye beam which Mechagodzilla is known for, instead we get this yellow chest beam. So, cool. Alright, so for the extra hand parts, really all you have to do is just pop them off and then pop the new hands on. Not that difficult to do by this stage of the game with SH Monster Arts, you know what you're doing. And they actually do look very nice. You can see inside them and you can actually see what looks like the missiles actually did fire off, so that's cool. Unfortunately, one of mine has a chip on the finger, but you know what? I'm not really going to hold it against it because that is something that I very, very, very well could have done myself. Now, for that beam, it does come with a support stand. Why they didn't include just a normal Tamashi Stage Act 4 support base and arm for this one, I don't know. But they decided to go ahead and make their own, which also includes the copyright information. It can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to actually pop that ball joint into the beam itself, but you just got to try to be very forceful but careful so this way you don't snap anything because the beam actually is made of a very, very stiff plastic. But anyway, it does look a little cloudy, and I do have some floaters in mind, which isn't very nice. But yeah, all you have to do is just pop everything together and then open up the door on Mechagodzilla's chest, line everything up, and there you go. So, we get a support stand for the beam, but not a flight stand for Mechagodzilla, despite the fact that he can fly. That's very cool. Admittedly, we do get that beam effect, but why couldn't they include the I-beam as an instead of or in addition to? I don't know. But still, at the end of the day, it's very nice to see that we do have not only accessories, but effect parts returning to the SH Monster Arts line, and this is something that absolutely must continue. However, you gotta admit, for Mechagodzilla, this kinda does look a bit wimpy, doesn't it? So, if you're looking to upgrade your display with other effect parts that you're gonna have to buy separately, click on the card in the top right-hand corner of your screen, and I can show you where you can get that lightning bolt effect and those little aura effects that are right around Mechagodzilla's feet. Mm-hmm. Yep, I made that video just for this purpose. Mm-hmm. I like it. Anyway... Time to get this review all wrapped up, and we're going to take a look at a size comparison next to the Rebel Tech Angiris for all the shots. Why? Because I'm working on that Angiris review, and I don't feel like doing two separate size comparison sections for both of them. Yep, yep. All right, so as you can see, Mechagodzilla is tiny, and there is no reason for that aside from Bandai's decision to make everything in a relative scale. Because even if it would be relative, Mechagodzilla should only be about three inches tall to the Heisei figure. So, yeah. Why they're doing this, I don't know. That should have been corrected, but hey, <laughs> good on you guys. So, buy now, skip, or wait for that deal. This is the confusing part for probably some of you because 
Yeah, admittedly, I do think that Mechagodzilla has many, many, many flaws, and it does. I think the paint is something that they really should have gone back to the drawing board on. Those metal rings on the shoulder, absolutely unacceptable for aesthetic reasons and for actual practical usage. And the effect parts, though they are included, one, where are the eye beams? And two, this is how many Mechagodzillas now and we don't have a flying support stand for Mechagodzilla? What, what, what are they doing? Okay, now if this was somewhere around $55 or $65, I would say, you know what? Those things are entirely forgivable because we actually have a nice quality Mechagodzilla figure on the market aside from those flaws. However, children, this is $95. In general, at minimum wage, that's about 10 hours worked, depending on which state you're in, okay? That is 10 hours of labor you are going to have to sacrifice to get this figure. $95. Not worth it. Not at all. If you can find a deal for this guy somewhere around the $70 to $75 range, you know what? That would actually be a little bit better, and that would be right at the tipping point where I could say, mm, okay, that's acceptable. And you want to know why I'm going to say that it's not worth it at $95? The original SH Monster Arts Kiryu, the one that pretty much everybody loved, except for a few outliers, and I can generally agree with their points to some degree. You know how much that was? about the same price. So ask yourself, is this Mechagodzilla here with engineering flaws and paint flaws equal to the amazing figure of the year winning Kiyu that we got in 2013? Is it the same? Is it really the same? If you say no, don't pick up this figure. Otherwise, if you're a Mechagodzilla fan, 1974 specifically, this is a solid figure, but it still does have flaws. Well, folks, that's the end of this review. Thanks for watching, and be sure to follow me on social media to catch more behind-the-scenes shenanigans and updates. The end card should be popping up now with more hand-selected STR goodness for you to watch, so check out some of those videos. Be sure to check the description, too, to see where you can buy this figure or others like it and some cool links, like the credits for this video and other ways you can help out the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you 